Blog Talk Radio. So everybody, thank you for tuning in to Late Night Leo's Valentine's Day Special Romance with Reptiles. Uh, tonight I've got my co-host, Yvonne. Yvonne, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, all the Valentine's Day peoples. So tonight we're gonna, just going to take a bunch of callers, and uh, if you guys want to call in with your dating disaster or love story on how uh, it worked out, being uh, dating and meeting people with, uh, you know, people with uh, over a hundred uh, little monsters back behind that closed door. So we just want to hear uh, how that worked out for you. So the number is one six four six seven one six five four zero three, and uh, we've got our first caller, Eric. Eric, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? All right. So what are you working on this year, Eric? Uh, not much, actually, this year. I'm planning on just doing a little bit of a prove-out. Uh, I have that snow rainwater mail that I was telling you guys about earlier, and yeah. he was sold to me 100% het eclipse, 100% het blizzard. So this year he's going to go to a snow typhoon, and then he's going to go to just my Eclipse female. So I'm just going to keep it small, mainly because I've got plans to move, and then I'm going on a two-and-a-half-week motorcycle trip. <clears throat> so Ooh. I'm not really trying to produce a whole lot this year, just keeping it very, very small and seeing what I get. And then I also have two blizzards from, from Josh Holly. And so yeah. I'll probably maybe pair those up later after I after I get back late August. So we'll see. Uh, you know, I don't know, but I'm keeping it small this year. Just just trying to prove out till I get moved. I don't want to be moving eggs and babies and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that so. sucks. Do yeah. you have any uh, horror stories about dating with reptiles? Uh, no, actually, I have a success story, so to speak. Uh, my current girlfriend hadn't really been exposed to reptiles, so when I met her, I made sure that I explained, like, I've got snakes, and you think I have one or two pet lizards, but I've really got, like, 60 to 100 pet lizards, so just so you know. <laughs> uh, which turned out fine. She She's not on the snakes, but she's getting there. She's not afraid of them or anything like that. And she absolutely adores, adores the geckos, and her daughter does too. So that's kind of cool. You know, she helps me out, and she'll maintain the children while I clean. So works out. So it's not really a horror story. Ah, well, that's, I mean, I've gotten that's weird really... looks when I tell people. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've gotten a bunch of those, and, uh, you know, they're like, this call cannot be completed once you tell them you've got, you know, 250 <laughs> geckos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, and, I mean, that goes for really, truly, the weird looks come from anyone and everyone. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're just talking to people, they they give you that look like, you have how many? Um, tell them. And they just kind of look at me like, you're crazy. I'm like, yeah, but they all live in... Basically, you know, 16 to 28 ounce tubs. You'd never know if you came over to my house that I had that many yeah. reptiles. You'd know that I had two leopard geckos, two big snakes, and, and currently a chameleon in my living room. That's it. That's all you would ever see. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah it's, it's convenient having them locked away. I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, most of my geckos are would would love to be interacted with especially if i had guests over they would be they'd be dying to come out um you know but the, you know people it's just not feasible to have them with my cat in the living room he's not uh the kindest to to an, other animals he's very much an apex predator or at least wants to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so, do you have any other projects to talk about, or? Uh, no, I, no, page? really. Like I said, <laughs> I'm really keeping it small. My page is Gecko Tropolis. Uh, hasn't really been been active as I've tra- been transitioning into the whole uh, dating scene and dating with children. And my son is 16, 
now, so he's got a lot of stuff going on. So I really haven't been keeping up with my Instagram or my, my Facebook page, but it is Geckotropolis. And you can find me on Instagram under that name and also Facebook. So I'm going to try here soon now that things are dying down. I'm going to try to get more pictures up and, and get things posted for sale and stuff. Right on. All right, well, thank you yeah. for calling in, Eric, and uh, I'll talk to you some other time. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for having me. I'll stay on and listen. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, Yvonne. Tell us a story. I'll tell a story. And this <laughs> 25 is actually, minutes. Uh, uh, tell a 25-minute story. <laughs> <laughs> She's the thing that never shuts up. Make her stop. Uh, the very first day that I ever met my husband... And I was there was something going on with the the ball python. I don't even remember what it was, and he was standing there behind me, and I reached into the cage and turned around and said, "Here, hold this," and did not even stop to think if is this person. I've never even spoke to the guy. Did not know if he's afraid of snakes, has a phobia, doesn't like them. He's going to take the snake and like fling it across the room. Just grabbed the snake and put it straight in his hands, and then I locked up and went, "Oh my goodness, what have I just done?" And looked up at him, and he was totally cool with it. And you have those epiphanies, and it's like, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my whole marriage story right there. That was a success story, too. But I guess we could like, do it and lie and tell it the other way. He screamed and ran out of the room. <laughs> Never so came what back. projects are you working on this year? Right now, honestly... I, I'm i kind of torn between which ones I'm looking forward to the most. Is I have uh, two really nice Murphy Patternless No Hats from John, and I'm kind of really excited about seeing, you know, just raising those babies out. And uh, always with the Diablo Blancos, I'm very, very excited about the Diablo Blancos. But as far as, like, from scratch projects, I don't really do that. I have the whole keep it simple, stupid method and buy something that I really like and enjoy and just keep those lines going because we have, like, several of Marsha's uh, different, um, mo uh, what do I want to say, morphs, sun glows. Yeah. And so I like just doing the, instead of doing the where somebody buys and then adds the different species or, you know, they're aiming for yeah. this particular trait or another. I just get it and breed it because I like what it is already. I'm not trying to make anything for myself or do special projects of any type. But yeah, I yeah. like the way this looks, and I just want to keep it that way. Plus, it always um, pays to breed animals that you can be just a total name dropper instead yeah. of doing the oh, I bred this and created this. When you're basically nobody in the industry, it pays to kind of have, well, this is from, you know, John Scarborough, or this is from Marsha McGinnis, and you have that kind of thing going for you. Yeah. When you yeah, don't like have the, a name for yourself. Yeah. The simple projects are, I don't know, I like them a lot, a lot better now. I mean, the complex stuff and... Well, just... the the more complex, to me, seems to be very intimidating. I just want to have very nice quality geckos that have excellent temperaments that come from excellent bloodlines. Uh, when you start adding in the 66% this and, you know, 50% yeah. that, my, I look like you hit me in the face with a frying pan and just stand there going, duh. What does that even mean? Is that in English? So just for the sake of my peace of mind, because I have to have somebody add my Yahtzee scores for me, I don't mess <laughs> with any of that. Yeah, I've, I've gotten to that point, too, where I this year I'm not even reading a whole lot of things, but, you know, 12.5% pure and ridiculous <laughs> it gets uh, the most that I want to have to write down on an ID card is that it's het eclipse I don't even want to have to deal with you know it's 
25%, which is, I think, is a ratio most people don't even bother writing down because it's so far back there. But I just want to put, yeah, this one was from a sun glow, and this one's from an eclipse, and that's about it. Yeah. Very enjoyable and not try to, I think if you don't enjoy it, and if you wake up in the morning and you're going, oh, my gosh, I think that puts uh, too much of a pall across it that you're feeling overwhelmed or it's too much work, and then you're not getting any enjoyment out of it, which... My thing is expressly for the enjoyment. I love yeah. just playing with them and talking to them and watching yeah, all the goofy crap that they do. <laughs> that's that's what it's all about. I mean, unless you're like, like a, a huge, massive breeder, then, you know, you should well, just be you, having fun. Yeah, if you have a knack for it, like some of the bigger breeders that are just like, you know, roll it off the top of their heads without even blinking yeah. or thinking, um, that's one thing. But you throw a couple of things at me and I'm floundered. I'm just, it's what? You know? So I have to keep it very basic for me to be able to enjoy it. Otherwise, it it intimidates me and I think, oh, you know, this is way out of my league. I don't... Uh, I don't aspire to anything. I do it because I love it. And things like, you know, the video that you did with your Satan gecko? <laughs> that, that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy is moments like that with the animals. Uh, yeah. I, don't try, I don't aspire to the, oh, my gosh, this is the only one in the world, and, you know, I'm releasing three of these this season. That's not my scene. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it just did a backflip. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> or it just jumped three feet at me. <laughs> Mine did that. I uh, I don't really talk to too many people on the phone, just a few here and there that are close friends. And I have uh, some of my Diablo Blancos that are from my from scratch, Yvonne Psycho Diablo Blancos. Uh, there was one that I opened up the bin a couple of weeks ago, and she was sitting on top of her hide. And she just, I did not know leopard geckos could do that. She flew through the air and hit me in the chest and bit me, screaming the whole way. So I just kind of stood there going, wow, that was really cool. (laughs) These are the moments I aspire to. (laughs) Yeah. It's my flying crazy gecko. Do you have a whole lot? What project do you have going on? Do what now? Uh, what? What? Everybody go what? You were asking me something, but I was asking you something at the same time. I was going to ask you what you have going on this year. Uh, this year I'm just I'm I'm breeding the uh, skull, the the pied faced gecko again for the oh, third cool. year. She's going to be breeding. So hopefully she produces something because she's hasn't for a long time and. I, I cut back on a lot of animals. I've only got maybe 30 females. Only 30 females breeding. So, I don't know. Just like White Knight and uh, Total Clip stuff. And then I'm breed the translucent stuff I'm breeding. So, hopefully I'll get some of those this year. Yeah, I definitely want to so, talk to you about some of those. Yeah. Yeah, that was... That was, like, the most exciting thing that I've ever seen this last year. Because, I mean, when it hatched out, I I thought it was uh, dying. Because <laughs> it, it had no pigment at all, and you could see its insides. And I've had weird stuff, like, I hatched out an inside-out gecko that was alive. It lived for a few days, and it was breathing and just completely flat, but its guts were on the outside, just, like, hanging out in the next geocell. <laughs> But, yeah, the the translucent was cool. It was super cool eating. Like, you don't realize when it eats that worm, like, all of its organs move around as the worm's, like, pushing its way through, which was really cool. Like, um, do you remember this might... You... Well, given what the things that interest you, because you tend to be a bit eclectic, uh, <laughs> did you see the old, I think it was from like the 60s or 70s, where they put the glass windows in the side of the cow so they could watch how it yes. digested the food? <laughs> <laughs> Morgan's the only other person on the planet that knows about this besides me. <laughs> yeah, I, that would be kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. 
could, could you imagine, like, changing the bolts or whatever that hold, you know, that hold the, hold the glass in there? Because they have oh, to, no. with the stomach acids, you'd think it would erode at it, right? It's kind of weird. But that would uh, that would definitely be, what and you've seen the glass frogs, right? Uh, yeah, that are very yeah, transparent those, those, little I, glass tree frogs. Those are cool. I'd love to get those. Mhm. I would yeah. just for the sake of watching them and being like, oh, there goes the silkworm. There it is, <laughs> right through there. Yeah, I like the the weird stuff. I I did breed the uh, my cross-eyed sun glow. <laughs> Oh, I love that gecko. <gasps> yeah, she she bred to the my pure Turkmenicus male, just because he seems to everything he breeds with gets really big fertile eggs, and I didn't really want to, you know, breed like a giant to her or some kind of snow or because she's possible had eclipse, so I had to be careful with, you know, is it eclipse or is it a cross-eyed baby. Mhm. So, yeah, that's that's going to be really exciting. I mean, always tricky territory. I, yeah, it's 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 exciting if I get a couple that I can keep forever, or you know, just to find out if it's a genetic thing. Because I know tons of people are freaking out about it. Because oh, there's a thing that you know tugs on their muscles that make their eyes cross-eyed, or is that true? I'm not sure. You have to get into some really in-depth anatomical uh, dissections or something to figure that one out. But yeah. I know, you, you hear so many stories about, and I was just talking to a breeder. I got off the phone with the breeder to do this, that we were talking about, um, you know, how much of this stuff do you think is due to genetics and how much is it due to uh, fluctuations in our incubators, even though we say our incubators aren't fluctuating, we're asleep somewhere, you know, that we're not constantly <laughs> staring at the incubators, that we have to know, you know, oh, it never fluctuates. Well, you don't, you honestly don't know unless you have like a computer tracker on your incubators, but we see an awful lot of weird stuff that happens just due to temper, temperature fluctuations that we're not 100% aware of. Yeah, you know, I I I don't even remember who I had a conversation with. It must have been on on the show a few months ago. But I was talking to somebody about if cuz there's a uh, for like hydroponics and stuff like that for agriculture, they have uh computer programs that regulate the thermostats and all that so the water is mm-hmm. heated and cooled depending on if it's snowing outside or something like that. So we were talking about if you had a big enough terrarium where you could have a a burrow, like an abandoned rat burrow or whatever, like what they have in Afghanistan that the geckos live in, and you, you followed the temperatures and had your thermostat, instead of if it was snowing, your thermostat would heat up, have it heat up if it's getting hotter in Afghanistan. You know, and that way, because at night, clear skies, it's going to drop quickly. So... It in the wild, too. they're fluctuating constantly. Have you ever spent any time out in the desert here in America? No. Um, it gets just bitter cold, and yeah. when my son was yeah, when my son was in the Middle East, we were packing his his uh, um, duffel bags, sea bags, getting ready for his deployment. And he's like, Mom, it's hot over there. Why are you putting this stuff in there? Uh, it, because I'm doing, like, jeans and a couple of long sleeve button-down shirts. And he's like, Mom, it's the desert. It's, like, really hot. And I just kind of stood there and looked at him and packed it anyway. Because over there it goes from, you know, let's cook a steak on the sidewalk to, okay, I'm frozen solid and can't move, all in a single 18-hour time frame. So yeah. it would be kind of interesting to mimic that and see what the effects are because one of the things that I talk about with uh, the people that I do speak with is the temperature fluctuations. But they're, I think that over there, even though they're underground, it's quite not as rapid as we would fluctuate them because one person was, yeah. talking, about, one person was talking about they went from, um, oh, my, the, my geckos hatched like this and had this. What do you think that is? 
and uh, they were trying to do the color manipulation, how you can make the stronger oh, pigment yeah. at higher temperatures. Well, they went from 83 to like 89 degrees all in one swing. <laughs> and it's like, uh, no, it has to be very gradual. You can't do it that way. Yeah, I, I, I do. I think about that often because it's, what is it, like 10 or 15 feet underground, it's 55 degrees. Mm-hmm. So... I, I don't, I don't know. It would, it would be very interesting. Very slow. Um, you, you go from like seventy to about ninety, just saying that you're underground. You know, it'd be like yeah. hundred and ten to like what forty degrees <laughs> above Honestly, ground. Honestly, because it goes from you know you're in tank tops or what they call them wife beaters in the afternoon, yeah. and then if they're working night shifts then they're all of a sudden in winter parkas, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they're out there playing basketball in the compound, and then the next thing you know, you're having to uh, wear a, a double thick coat just to walk to the flight line. But yeah. it would be very interesting that if we would not be shot and murdered on site, that we could actually go over there and do field studies and put, like, th- uh, thermometers. <laughs> 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 Basically. Well. But be able to do temperature readings and see what the swings are from, you know, above ground at this time of day to below ground that time of day would be some interesting stuff to find out. Yeah, and and seasons. I mean, I was I was talking to somebody in India last fall, and they were saying that you know it was twenty five inches of rain and like ninety degrees out. Oh my gosh! So, I mean. I, I would think that the the Indian species would need higher humidity, just based on you know they probably swim in most parts of the jungle. I was just to say they probably need like some little uh, floaties around their waist and some little water <laughs> yeah. wings. Like, okay, to do proper husbandry with these, they need air mats and snorkels. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm glad you yeah. know that. Or, or maybe they climb trees and live in a, you know, abandoned bird nests or hollows in the trees. That would make total sense. I think that there is so much, when I stop and look at the entire big picture uh, and what we think we're doing right and what we think is so wrong to do, when it comes down to the bottom line at the end of the day, we honestly are pretty darn clueless. We just... We yeah. know what gets us by and that the animals appear healthy uh, and they're reproducing, so they must be doing okay. But I think that if we were ever able to do very, very in-depth studies and have field people go over there to spend months in the desert and jungles and arid areas watching these guys, we would just do face palm to ourselves going, holy crap, how have we let them survive? They've they've survived in spite of our husbandry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it would be interesting if somebody would do it with, like, the colonics, you know, because those are here in the U.S. <laughs> just going to fall You'd be around. able to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a lot. Falling around though, in California, you... in the rocky yeah. terrain of California on your hands and knees. Okay, <laughs> here he goes into his burrow. Have some little, um, what are the snake cams that they use on the uh, toilet, the snakes, and have a little camera on that and just follow him down into his tunnel and see what he does. He's over there at the stove <laughs> cooking himself a steak. <laughs> Well, that that would be interesting to see what they do down <laughs> in the burrow. You know, like if they it click would. at each other or whatever. I, I also know. think that um, a lot of these species are a lot more vocal than what we realize, too. Because yeah. the majority of everyone is so busy and they are constantly on the run. I sit here at night with the lights off and everything turned off and turned down turn off the fans, turn off everything, and listen. And you can hear them making noises to one another. I think they're a lot more loquacious than we have ever considered. Yeah. They make a lot of little squeaks and chirps and strange noises to one another, and they kind of they'll even gurgle at each other, sort of. Like, oh, I'm learning to speak leopard gecko, gecko-ese. Yeah, There's I think that would be... Know. 
Yeah, well, you know, putting like a little microphone in a terrarium with like three geckos would be very interesting to hear what they're talking about at night. Because I think that a lot of the hissing is for pre- predators, you know, hissing and screaming, but it, it's like with the uh, dart frogs, they have a lot quieter call, a lot of them. You know, they just talk to each other instead of screaming at their predator. I've always wondered what yeah. the little geckos thought they were proving, because for us, when they do it, we laugh hysterically. <laughs> um, and, it, and I think about, well, what kind of animals are indigenous to the territory out there, little different types of foxes and stuff like that. To yeah. me, that scream would attract more predators. <laughs> because yeah. you think of the little desert foxes are very um, inquisitive by nature, and if they heard that noise, they would go, oh, let's go over and check this out. Oh, cool, a gecko to eat. <laughs> I think you're, little gecko, I think you're doing it backward. Don't scream. They need a deeper voice. <laughs> No, like a lion. That'd yeah. be kind of cute. But it's a video to a baby gecko roaring like a lion. <laughs> yes, that's intimidating. Oh, You're geez. off everything within 10 miles. Run for your lives! So have you seen that uh, lemon frost leopard gecko? Yeah, don't get me going. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm not very PC, so I kind of have to avoid some topics. I don't know. Some stuff, I just look at it and I go, that is absolutely line bread. There's no way you can do this. And they're very beautiful, but people start arguing about, well, is it this or is it that? And I just kind of shut up and sit here. <laughs> and, and then do you again, think it's line I, bread? I uh, honestly, I really do. Um, yeah. But there's always you know, there's always things that happen, and once again, we really don't even. This is a question that I have always wanted to ask. We always talk about um, the different hets, and if it's het for this, and if it's het for that, and you hear about people that were, uh, you know, I've line bred these for X amount of years, and all of a sudden this popped out. Isn't it just always in the math somewhere along the line? that if you breed X to X, eventually something is going to pop out. It does it all the time because that's how we've, not we've, you guys have run across some of the different morphs that you have is by, whoa, where'd that come from? So even if you're breeding this to this for X period of time, isn't it just in the mathematics, in the statistics, in the percentages that something, yes, Zephyr, we know, uh, is going to pop out that you were not expecting? Yeah. I mean, that's, there's just. I think that's the idea. I mean, a, a lot of people argue with that that if you continue doing the same thing, you won't get anything different. But I mean, see, to me, I'm 180 out. I'm gene- like, if you keep doing it, something's yeah. going to show up. Yeah, there's going to be a genetic mutation at some point. I've I mean, always thought that <laughs> because you hear too many stories of. Uh, you know, I've test bred these animals over and over, and I know what's behind them, and I've test bred, also test bred the offspring from those animals. We've never had anything show up, and then all of a sudden you have something going, ta-da! It's like, oh my gosh, where did it come from? Well, it was just there. It just hit at the right way at the right time for those two, you know, little DNA, holy cow, to split yeah. the right way that it appeared having a really bad storm, and I think the storm door on the front of the house just departed for Kansas somewhere. <laughs> Holy cow. It, it's okay, because we, we have a short show tonight. I only did a 30 minutes, so... Oh, my gosh. We're, Hang on. I can't even get hold of the door. <laughs> are you still in Kansas? Oh, my goodness. That was... <laughs> Probably over the radio, it probably sounds like I'm dying over here. <laughs> that was scary enough. I hope it doesn't come so undone you, again. You you want to tell everybody your your page? Do you have a page? I have a uh, Wild Wing Creations, but I don't even know if it's That's a page. Right. Um, it's a page, but we don't really um. 
do or sell or, you know, we're mainly into them because we enjoy them and love spending time with them. This year, I would definitely, yeah, that was the front door. It, it flew to Oklahoma. Yeah, it's still there. But um, we, it's mainly because, um, yes, just enjoy spending time with them. But I have bought some. Uh, the last couple of years have been gradually acquiring different ones here and there uh, of, like, the, the Anger Menu. I would love to be able to breed those when they get old enough. And definitely, like, the Murphy Patternless. Uh, would love to be able to sell some someday. So I do keep the page semi up to date with just sharing other people's stuff. But, yeah, it's Wild Wind, Wild Wind Creations on Facebook. But there's not really no. anything there to see of mine. It's everybody else's stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are at the end of the show, so I'd like to thank you for coming on and being my co-host. And I don't know where Dylan went. Where is I'm gonna Dylan? I'm going to have to go yell at him. Shame on him. Yeah. We'll but, uh, yeah, thank Facebook. you so much for <laughs> thank you for coming on and being my co-host tonight. All right. Thank you so much. All and right. We'll and talk uh, later on. Yes, yes, I will for sure. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And don't forget to check out the Reptile Report voting. Uh, I don't know when they're going to stop that. I think it's on the 16th. And, yeah, thank you all for tuning in to the episode. And we will see you next time. <laughs>